Hi, I'm Laura with the Canadian Museum of Nature and I'm here in the museum's fossil collections and on these shelves are many plaster field jackets protecting dinosaur bones that were collected decades ago, even a century ago. So how does a fossil encased in plaster go from this to a finished and proudly displayed exhibit in a museum? Opening up one of these plaster field jackets and extracting and preparing the fossil takes a lot of time, commitment and delicate work, but the payoff is worth it. Let's hear more from our fossil preparator, Alan McDonald, who is carefully working on a triceratops specimen. So behind me is a big jacket, a plaster jacket. And what we do uh, was when we were out in the field and we were trying to protect the specimen, we uh, put a cast of uh, plaster and burlap uh, around the specimen to keep it from falling apart further, uh, protect it from the elements, and it adds a level of shock absorption when you travel. So we have many field jackets still in the collection waiting to be opened, but in this case, this one here was collected by Charles Sternberg in 1929. Today I'm uh, actually doing a little bit of preparation on a section of frill or the collar from a triceratops. It's a fairly large specimen, and uh, I'm using some hand tools and some uh, pneumatic tools to remove the rock from around the fossil. So when I'm preparing the softer rock or the more fragile specimens, I tend to use hand tools like dental picks to remove the rock. But sometimes when you get into harder rock or more robust specimens, I like to bring out a little bit more of a powerful tool called a air scribe. And it's driven by air, and it's a tiny little jackhammer that goes up and down and removes the rock a little bit easier. So when the big tools are too big and the small tools aren't enough, we have one for in between. So once I'm finished work on the smaller section, it's on to the larger, more complete specimen, and that'll take about two years. I know it seems like a long time to so spend two years working on one specimen, but who knows? It could be the world's largest triceratops specimen. We hope this gives you a little insight into fossil preparation and how much work we still have to do. Thanks for joining us for this Nature Scoop. Until next time.